In this video I'm going to show you how to install and use the OBS3 plugin input overlay. We're going to start with the installation. So if you're on the OBS forums you can just click go to download. It'll take you to GitHub. And when you're on here you can always see if it's the latest release with this latest tag. Right now that is version 502. Down here we have different uh, versions for different operating systems. You can either use the installer or you can install it manually so if you have a portable installation you would download the zip archive which is going to go with the installer just open it now you're probably going to get this info screen if you click on more info you can run it anyways you're just gonna click next it'll install into C program files, which, which is where OBS3 usually is at. Click yes, default already exists, next. And then you're done. Then you can just open OBS Studio. And if all everything worked, you should have the input overlay settings dialog here, as well as the input overlay source. If not, you can check your log in here and it will usually tell you what went wrong. So in this case it says here loading input overlay. And this is also needed to figure out what's wrong, so you need to upload the log file in case something didn't work. Okay, now that you've installed the plugin, you can start adding the input overlay source. The source takes two files, which you can either get from GitHub, or if you have your own presets, you can load those. If you don't have any, you can download the presets alongside the release, the presets zip archive. Just extract this anywhere you want. Just gonna. put them here and then we can start pointing OBS to that folder. We're going to start with a simple one, WASD and as you can see it works just fine. Just a small hint, do not load these preview files. They are just for how the, the overlay is going to look. So if you load these you will see it looks wrong. And the simple solution is just load the, don't load the preview files. Okay. There's a bunch of other uh, presets for different keyboard layouts or different games. And there's also mouse and gamepad presets, which are going to be covered separately. Okay, so now we're going to look at the gamepad overlay. There's only uh, a couple of things to it. First and foremost, make sure that under the input overlay configuration the gamepad hook is enabled. If it was enabled, check this and restart OBS. The same goes for keyboard and mouse. If you use a keyboard and mouse overlay, the hook has to be started. By default they should both be on. I'm just gonna load one of the gamepad overlays. There's a couple ones. This gamepad, a Switch Pro controller, um, and a dual sense, which is like I think the PlayStation controller. We're just gonna use the one, the default one, which is the Xbox controller. Just load the PNG again and then load the JSON. As you can see, that looks fine. And then in the gamepad ID, I have one connected. It's a Xbox 360 controller. Just select that one. If it doesn't show up, click reload. Make sure it's plugged in and if I use my controller, you can see that the input is showing up. Well, the guide button in the middle doesn't work. It opens the, <laughs> the gaming overlay, but the rest works just fine. And that's all there is to the gamepad overlay. Okay, up next is the mouse preset. The default one is also very straightforward. Just load the PNG and the JSON 
just a no movement one it's just standard five button mouse um, but then there's two additional options there's dot and arrow and these try to visualize the mouse movement so first thing i would change is the sensitivity this kind of determines how much this dot is going to move and then there's a dead zone that kind of ignores smaller movements um, but both of these don't work that well if you're just moving your mouse around like that i mean technically visualizes it mostly correctly but then there's also this use more center option which you can just check and as you can see if it's by default it's zero zero this is the point on your screen that is used as a reference to calculate the mouse movement so zero zero is the top left corner so you can see that if I move my mouse up there it points to the right and if I move it down here it points downwards um, there is a entry on the wiki Uh, for the mouse movement here, which documents this option in detail, um, which allows you to find out what to set this value to. This only works for games that lock your mouse in a position, and then if you move it, it the game moves it back to that position. Um, but yeah, it's mostly documented here. You will need a tool, which you can get here, there's like a, a build for libuio hook which is like the input hooking library if you click on nightly build you will get a bunch of folders you probably want to have the windows one and then there is a demo hook.exe which you can extract and then there is also what you need is this .dll file okay these two things i just extracted them already here they need to be in the same folder and if you double click now this tool will open and you can see it gives you this output so it, it shows you where the mouse currently is at so up there is zero zero mostly and if you have this tool you can follow the instructions on the wiki and that's really all there is to the mouse overlay so now just some quick information about the so now just some quick information about the configuration dialog, which is under tools, input overlay settings. There's three tabs. The about dialog just gives you some general information uh, and some links. Then there's a WebSocket server and the local features. Here you can disable mouse and keyboard hooks. If you disable this, uh, the plugin will not check for any mouse and keyboard input and the same for a gamepad here and you can also disable the source type which is the input overlay if you don't want that one um, then there is enable input control which is for filtering and that is basically all there is to it now we're going to take a quick look at input filtering which is the input control option here if you check this you can make sure that input overlay only displays inputs when you want it to. So there's two options, white and blacklist. If we enable whitelist, it means that only if these uh, specific windows are active, input overlay uh, will display the inputs. So for example, I have a notepad window open here, a list of open windows here, and if you click refresh you can refresh this list it checks for all your open uh, windows we just select this one add new filter click ok now if i type in obs here i don't know you can probably not really see it if i rename the source and i type you can see it doesn't show up but if i type in here you can see it works so this is the whitelist mode, which means only the windows in this list will be used for visualization. Visualiz for visualization, if we invert this blacklist, it means every window will work, like OBS here. But once I activate a window that is in the list, 
um, it will no longer show the input. So it's just an inversion. That way you can, for example, select a bunch of games that you want to be used for the overlay, but once you go into a different program and type something, it will not show up, which is kind of useful if you don't want your password to show up <laughs> or something like that, or just generally don't want the overlay to be active if you're not in a certain program or if you are in a certain program, depending on which filter you use. You can also enable regex for window titles. Um, so you can see you can type in here. If you know what regex is, you can use that. If you don't, then uh, you can ignore this option, but it allows you to kind of look more granularly. For example, maybe you only want, you don't want to look for it this specific, but maybe you want to look for any title that contains the word notepad, you can express this with regex. But for normal users, it's, it's enough to just disable this option and just use whatever is in the list. And that's how this input filtering works. Okay, now we're going to look at the WebSocket server. This is a new feature for the 5.0 release. First things first, you have to enable the option, which basically hosts a WebSocket server on this port. And this is used for two things, for visualizing inputs in the browser source and for retrieving inputs from other computers. So we're just going to enable this now and we're going to restart OBS and then I'm going to go through the um, browser source first and then we're going to look at the remote input. Okay, so when you start up OBS for the first time after enabling the WebSocket server, you get this screen. Just leave the options as they are, click allow access and then we can start connecting to this machine. Okay, now OBS was restarted and the WebSocket server should be running. Um, you should even see it in the log if we look at it. I think so, maybe. I don't know, is it somewhere in here? There it is. Default port. And now we can add a browser source. Click local file browse into the presets that you extracted at some point, I guess. There is one example, or technically there's two, I think, but this one is the input history. Select this HTML file, click OK, OK. And now if I type something, you can see it show up. That's the input history using the WebSocket server and the browser source. Okay, so now for the remote connection via the WebSocket server. Now we have already enabled it in the settings, just like we, for the browser source. Um, usually you can also see your IP address here, that's the one you need to connect to. Uh, in my case, it's not correct. So we can also look it up with the command line, which is just type in IP config. Um, you can start a command line with pressing Windows and R and then CMD. And then you can see this is the IP I need to use. It's for the Ethernet adap adapter. Um, and then we need the client software. The client software is you can download uh, via the zip here. If you use the installer, you will have to download this separately now. On Linux, the same thing. If you download this, we will find a IO client folder inside. Extract these two files. I have already done that. We'll give you this exe file. If you press shift and right click in this folder, open PowerShell window here, we can run the client. I'm going to do this in a separate machine, obviously, because I want to connect another computer to this one so that if I use my keyboard or my mouse on the other machine, OBS can visualize the inputs on this machine here. Um, it's the same thing for Linux uh, and for simplicity I just <laughs> shared my screen here so this is the machine that we is right next to me and we're going to connect it to this OBS instance here. 
Yeah, it's pretty straightforward. I'm just going to close this for now and we're gonna pay attention to the screen over here. If I run the client, I get the same output. We need an address, dash A, that is this option here. And we have to give it the WebSocket uh, URL, which is uh, just, as it says there, WS colon slash slash and now the IP address, which I already forgot. It's this one here, which is going to have to type that in 192.168.178.103 slash. Uh, now we need the colon and then the port 16899 slash. The port, this section here is the number that is here. By default, it is 16899. Um, just like before, the WebSocket server is already running. I restart, restarted OBS after enabling the option. And now the other thing we need to do is we need to give this machine a name so we can identify it. Dash N, laptop. You don't have to use dash N, you can also use the long form. So dash dash name equals and then the name. But this is just easier. And lastly, we have to choose what to monitor. I just want the keyboard, so that means that the machine that I'm typing this on will send the keyboard over to OBS. If you want the mouse, you just add dash M, and if you want gamepad, you add dash G. But for now, we're just going to use that. We're going to press enter. We are going to be connected, as you can see here. Now I'm going to type something real quick, just a little bit. You have to send something over to OBS for OBS to recognize this machine. If we go on the properties of any input overlay source now, we have the input source option here. And as we have in the drop down, we have the laptop. And if I type anything here now, as you can see, it gets transferred over to OBS. And that's really all there is to it.